hi and welcome back so the next topic that we are going to discuss is ethical hacking so uh, before we get into ethical hacking first let's understand what is the difference with uh, ethical hacker and a hacker or ethical hacking and hacking well i'm i'm, I'm very sure that uh, you know you are aware of the uh, differences between ethical hacking and hacking there's you know no doubt however please understand that the topics that we will be covering will have the basics part covered whatever it could be it would be about a you know technical part it could be an advanced level thing also but we will start with the basic so that's how the you know training goes because you want to ensure that the basic is uh, set uh, as we see that in most of the candidates they don't have the basic knowledge very very basic knowledge and basic understanding is is what is lacking behind uh, is what we are seeing so uh, ethical hacker or um, ethical hacking uh, is you know uh, done legally with permission of the respective organization uh, and hacking is basically done illegally without the consent of the respective organization so without permission and with permission so obviously with permission means legally and without permission means illegally done in an attempt to prevent malicious attacks from being successful okay so you test with a good perspective however as an hacker you do it to uh, make malicious attacks possible and um you know uh, basically as an ethical hacker you disclose the vulnerabilities that you have discovered and uh, as an hacker or a hacker they don't disclose they they exploit the vulnerability and they make uh, use of it okay basically they make wrong use of it so here i would like to share a small incident that happened with us a lot of incidents um, to similar things have happened uh, in one of the incident are um, uh in turn because we strictly you know we you, you get to sign an nda also uh while while the offer letter is released for you you'll have to go through the offer letter and the nda and you have to accept it so it's clearly mentioned that you know you will not use any of the uh, exploits or vulnerabilities for your own purpose okay so there was there was a intern to whom we had given a e-commerce uh target okay and uh, the ma man in the man in the middle attack or parameter tampering attack was covered for him so this particular target that was assigned had the parameter tampering now parameter tampering what happens is you can change the value of a product to any amount product or you know book, uh, bus ticket or uh, recharge or anything like that so this was a e-commerce play base so he could he, he ordered uh, certain uh you know uh, devices okay uh, certain uh, technical things he uh, he he ordered and uh, since he was able to change the value so the product was about 50000 and he ordered it for 10 rupees okay so we didn't we didn't know he did not tell us also uh, but you know uh, before uh, even the uh, delivery could happen we got to know and we fired him and uh, you know uh, we had to take certain strict actions from him all right uh, <clears throat> so it's very important that you you be ethical ethical means you know you uh, and and many a times it happens that you uh, you are in a place where you know you you get to uh, you know you get to see the gold in front of you or the diamond in front of you but you have to give it to the right person back and not use it for your own purpose this is very important okay so ethics is very important in cyber security because as i said in cyber security you will be working with vulnerabilities nothing else okay you will be working with vulnerabilities all right just like doctors find diseases and they have to tell the patient what disease they have okay if they found a disease they have to cure that disease but nowadays as you know 
the me medical industry, uh, the hospitals have become a business where they are making a lot of money and you know, that's a different thing. However, as an ethical hacker, as a cyber security professional, you should not be having that thinking in mind that you will uh, make, you, uh, you know, take advantage for your own purpose. Okay, so that's the difference with um, ethical hacking and uh, uh, hacking. Next is what is the difference with ethical hacking and cyber security? Uh, again, very important because many many have this confusion. Uh, they just you know say ethical hacking rather than cyber security. Uh, especially the freshers and beginners, they 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 know about ethical hacking and not cyber security. So the difference is that ethical hacking is one domain in cyber security. It's just one part of cyber security. Okay, we have uh, already seen that there are so many departments. We saw in the last session, you know, there are so many departments there. There are so many teams there. So there are a lot of domains also. Okay, so all these teams or departments are basically domains like physical security is a domain, business continuity is a domain. Like in ISO 27001, there are 14 domains in uh, cyber security that are, that are discussed, which includes uh, uh, human resources is a, is a domain, asset management is a domain, lot of things. All these domains we will teach you during the training on uh, ISO 27001. Uh, it's a very, very um, important topic in cyber security, which you have to be knowing. Okay, so you are getting to learn about that uh, uh, and we'll teach you during the training. So uh, ethical hacking is just one part of it and and we will teach you about ethical hacking and different, 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 different domains that are there. We'll try to cover as much domain as possible and uh, see, we, we cannot make you perfect in everything. So our job is to, you know, uh, make sure that you know things because when you're applying uh, when, for a job and when you're taking the interview, the company, they will have expectation that you you know you are um, having knowledge on different different things but they, uh, they would not expect you to be expertise in everything you know uh, even if you are applying for VA put position if you know what ISO 27000 is you know even if you have not worked on it but if you can explain them you can tell them in a very good way then it's more than enough even if you have not worked on it also it's fine that's how companies work as a as a fresher as a beginner at an early stage they just expect you to have the logical understanding and not the definition of it okay again very important definition from the book from google you buy at it and keep that will not help you okay because there will be cross questions that will be asked and all the questions in the interview will be logical questions okay so you need to have that understanding all right and that's why um, uh, we 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 will uh, we have kept all the you know domains and uh, we'll try to give you that logical understanding of each of the domain. So ethical hacking is one one uh, uh, domain in cyber security, and as I said, you should not be having the wrong intention. As a security professional, you should be having ethics. If not, we have something called as IT Act 2000. Uh, I've already told this. So let's take up uh, a few minutes on the IT Act, uh, though there will be a separate session on cyber law and cyber forensic for you. However, uh, IT Act, Indian uh, Information Technology Act 2000, okay, uh, it came to force uh, on 17th October 2000. Okay, so in 1996, let's understand the history of it. In 1996, the uh, United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, that is UNCITRAL, okay, they adopted the model law on electronic commerce, that is e-commerce, to bring uniformity in the law in different countries. So this was earlier e-commerce or electronic commerce, okay. Uh, further, the G General Assembly of the United Nations recommended that all countries must consider this particular law before making any changes to their own laws. Okay, so if any country had to come up with their own law, then they had to refer this particular thing uh, because this was like a general thing, you know, um, like um, uh, for example, imagine like, you know, uh, mobile uh, providers. So you have Airtel and Reliance and all. So you can't use the same in 
in in lot of countries in certain countries definitely you can but lot of countries you cannot use the same network okay same thing what would have happened if you know you could not in use internet in different countries right that that would not be a, there would not be uniformity just a small example for that reason there should be a certain uniformity among all the uh, countries and all so that's what they came up with uh, so india became the 12th country to enable cyber law after it passed the information technology act 2000 india was the 12th country in the world a major amendment was done in 2008 the amendment was passed on 22nd december 2008 without any debate in lok sabha the next day it was passed in the rajya sabha it was signed by um, then president pratibha patel on 5th uh, december 2009 so there there was a there was a big uh, amendment that was done okay and um, uh, this is about the history of information uh, technology act okay so um, next we'll take a look at some of the sections only only a few sections i'll i'll discuss here first one section 65 tampering with computer source documents is a crime imprisonment up to 3 years and fine up to 2 lakhs so here tampering with computer document doesn't mean that you access someone computer and you you know do something there no like for example if you have accessed a web web server and you delete something there okay you delete something on the server it will be a um, act under section 65 okay you delete some data from someone's mobile phone it's a crime as per section 65 so um, it doesn't mean that you know at a very high level at a very basic level also if you delete some uh, uh, data from import important documents photos from someone's phone laptop or server any documents or anything you delete from the server it becomes a uh, crime under section 65 next very important hacking with computer system is a crime okay so here uh, the imprisonment is up to 3 years and fine of up to 5 lakh okay so here hacking doesn't mean wearing a hoodie cap and you know sitting in front of a computer and black screen and all that no hacking hacking means you you delete something you access something you put it publicly outside okay you cause damage or you you cause a loss or a damage to a company to an institution to an individual then it's a um act of section 66 which is hacking with computer system uh, section 66b receiving stolen computers or communication device is a crime imprisonment up to 3 years and fine up to 1 lakh okay so before buying a second hand phone please make sure that you verify and you buy it and whenever you are selling your phone to someone ensure that you format that phone at least 4 or 5 times before giving it back okay because the more you format the more uh, difficult it becomes to recover the data that is why section 66d cheating with computer resource is a crime computer resource or communication device is a crime 3 years of jail and 1 lakh of fine so your cheating means you're texting someone and you know you're trying to uh, fool that person you're trying to scam that person you're trying to bluff that person you're trying to cheat your boyfriend or girlfriend that can also be considered as section under section 66d okay so cheating can be in, in, in any form in terms of financial teaching it could be in terms of personal things it could be it could be anything here okay and this is one of the common uh, section that applies to the uh, person who who is caught when when they are um, you know cheated to their wife or uh, husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or you know they they uh, do scams and also this is one of the section that is implied uh, section 67c failure to maintain records so uh, persons deemed as intermediary that is isp isp stands for internet service provider that there we have hathway we have um, act fibernet we have um uh, bsnl all these are called as isps and as per the uh, it act they have to maintain records for a stipulated time okay if they don't then 3 years of jail or fine so uh, this will help us to trace back uh, this is something which 
the ISPs are not following today because in most of the cyber crime related cases when we have approached the ISPs they fail to have it okay uh, the reasons are obviously uh, you know uh, there is a cost for maintaining the records to certain duration and uh, they need to have a technician and all that and and they don't want to do it so they're not doing it many many of the ISPs are not doing it however it's a mandatory requirement that they do it okay so that's about IT act coming back to our ethical hacking so what is ethical hacking ethical hacking is a process okay it's a method it's an approach okay it's a process or a method or an approach to test the security of a machine so this is what ethical hacking is okay ethical hacking it's a it's a process basically it tells you how to perform ethical hacking uh, it tells you the method it tells you the approach in order to find vulnerabilities in a system in order to test a particular system or a machine or a website or a server anything okay and how is this ethical um, hacking been uh, done how, how is the ethical hacking done there are there are certain stages for it okay the process or the method or the approach that is there it has certain steps uh, that are involved so basically there are five steps that are involved in ethical hacking step one or the stage one number one starts with reconnaissance or information gathering very 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 important stage this is where you try to gather information okay once you have gathered the information you perform scanning all right then you try to gain access you try to maintain the access and then you clear tracks so these are the five stages of ethical hacking very important from your career point of view please make sure if at all you are getting into web application security or VAPT as such, please make sure you remember this thing. You know, you buy hard whatever you want to do, but you can't say wrong here, or you can't say that you don't know the five stages because this is very common, this is very basic, and this is very, very, very important. Information gathering or reconnaissance. You find the information, then you scanning, you scan for vulnerabilities, then you gain access to the system, you maintain access there, and then you clear the track. Okay. So each of the stages are designed for certain things. Okay. By this, you get the information that is hidden, you get vulnerabilities, you uh, by by gaining access, you tell the client that you know you are how easy it is for you to do so you are basically highlighting the risk or threat here we will discuss about this um, you know about the risk and threat all right by by maintaining the access you are telling the client that boss see i am able to be here okay i am not just able to get into your house but i am able to stay in the house all right and then clearing tracks so i asked this question and you know, um, uh, people never, uh, very few, it has happened that uh, candidates have answered this, uh, that, that is also one or two times. So, the question is here, why do you need to clear the tracks as a fifth stage? Why clearing tracks is a stage in ethical hacking? Many, many candidates say that clearing tracks will help us. I mean, if I ask you, you if you are aware of this, you might also say the same thing that clearing tracks we do it so that we are not traced back okay so we don't leave any traces there so that any so that the company or ethical hacker doesn't traces us but my question is if you're performing ethical hacking it means that you are doing it with permission then why do you even want to want to clear the tracks you know why are you afraid of what are you afraid of you know, why you even have to clear the tracks because you have taken the permission all right so the the answer would be in something like this i'm definitely sure you might also be uh, you know having the uh, you had the same thought or you might be having the same thought or similar thought however the reason why there is clearing tracks uh, is that as i said every stage is designed for certain reason okay so by maintaining the access you 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 tell the client that i'm able to be here 
by clearing the tracks you are telling the client that boss i am not able i am not just able to gain the access maintain the access but i am also able to delete my logs delete the tracks okay and by doing this i uh, uh, you know i am i am able to uh, be safe and you will not be able to find the reason behind the uh, attack that has happened or you will not be able to find the person behind this all right so it tells the sensitivity of the vulnerability or the severity of the vulnerability that you are able to clear the tracks and your and, and the company will not be able to find or trace back the person so better you remediate this vulnerability all right so that's the reason and uh, the third and fourth gaining access and maintaining access is part of exploitation exploitation means taking advantage of the uh, vulnerability okay you are exploiting here you are just finding the vulnerability then you are exploiting the vulnerability exploiting the vulnerability should never be done it's part of penetration testing okay we will talk about penetration testing in the next few slides so um, the, this is how um, you know these are the stages of ethical hacking and this is how ethical hacking is done now the next question is how is this done actually okay so we use some uh, we use tools okay so just like how the doctors use different different tools like you know x ray scan mri scan and lot of lot of scans if you go to a uh, if you go to a, a, a bone specialist then they will have that hammer small small hammer and all that you know uh, if you go to a um, um, eye specialist if you go to um, any any um, eye eye specialist for for checking your uh, eyesight then they have certain tools you know where they put certain things and they ask you whether able you are able to read these read that you know and so they are using tools so we also in ethical hacking we use certain tools uh, one of the prominent tool that we use is kali linux now kali is an operating system of the linux family okay so we use kali all right and uh, it's an operating system okay kali is an operating system it uh, apart from kali there are other tools uh, or operating systems also like we have parrot uh, we have debian and and any, a lot of them we have you can use any of the linux thing you can also use ubuntu also however kali is widely used because it has three defined repository of tools in it for lot of things we have tools in it uh, so we will not take session on how to install kali and all that uh, guidance will be given for you if you if you have not used kali before this please google for kali uh, how to install kali in virtual box or virtual machine you you will be able to get it or else we will the, your mentor will help you out okay so don't worry about that um, so talking about linux linux is something which is very important as a cyber security expert as a vapt uh, professional if you are planning in you know, web application security and all you have to be knowing linux okay so what is linux sorry what what is linux linux is an operating system okay linux is an operating system what is operating system uh, operating system is an interface between a computer and a a computer user and a hardware so i am the user and this is the hardware that i have like this is my laptop okay so it's an mediator between the hardware and the user this is called as operating system okay so you have the hardware there like you have a hard disk okay and uh, you are the user here you want to store something there in order to do that you need an operating system <coughs> so uh, it connects us with the computer hardware now what are the computer hardware or what is computer hardware there are different different computer hardwares or components we can say it like uh, you know th this is how a computer system is made of it could be a laptop or a desktop this is how a computer or even a mobile phone also this is how a computer system is made of uh, of computer hardware or computer components or hardware components you can call them anything so you have hard disk you have um a, re a, a reader 
you have a cpu you have a monitor you have mouse keyboard speaker in cpu you have a hard disk sound card vj card ram cpu cpu fan motherboard uh, uh, cd rom power supply all these components are there and if you want to use this you need an operating system okay so there are different uh, an, an operating system is a software which performs all the basic tasks like file management using hard disk <clears throat> memory management using ram and hard, hard disk uh, process management using the cpu and motherboard uh, and also using ram handling input and output using the uh, all in one card reader and dvd rom okay and controlling peripherals like uh, hard disk drives and mouse and keyboard and printers and so on so this is what an operating uh, system does uh, and there are various operating systems uh, most of the uh, operating system that you are aware of are uh, we have windows uh, apple uh, uh, ios android and this is for linux this is a linux based however there are a lot more operating systems okay android that you use is an operating system ios that uh, that we use is an operating system microsoft is an operating system ubuntu is an operating system fedora is an operating system solaris is an operating system freebsd chrome operating system which runs on chrome uh, tabs uh, cent os uh, Symbian, uh, Symbian is an operating system. I'm not sure if you remember this or not. Uh, if you have used a Nokia phone back then, okay, that time Nokia, it had an operating system which was named as Symbian. All right. Then we have the BlackBerry operating system. Uh, BlackBerry had their own operating system called as BlackBerry. Uh, that was also very long time. However, after when Android came up. Android was is been widely used, and these are all uh, uh, these are uh, you know Android, Symbian, BlackBerry, and mobile based operating system. These are all system based or server based operating system. Okay, so operating system has two things here. One is open source operating system and closed source. Open source means it is free to use. Like Linux, it is free for use. You can you can get access to the code of Linux. Okay, you can you can make your own Linux operating system, just like Kali. You can have your own operating system. Okay, and there is closed source. Closed source are like Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft they have developed it by themselves. They have made it a company. Uh, there are people who can you know who 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 will be there for you to support because you are paying them certain amount. So here in open source there is there is no. Team that that is sitting and you know to provide you all the support. It's a community here. It's a community when you are talking about open source and in closed source, it's a company, okay, where company people there is a support team who will support you and so on. So who are the uh, so these are the two uh, sides of operating system: open source and closed source, okay. Uh, operating system users who are they? One is uh, we have the uh, client, okay, who is using the operating system. And another is server. Okay, so who are the clients? Uh, clients. Uh, what does it mean by uh, when I say clients? Uh, clients basically means end users here. Okay, end users like you and me who are using the server. Okay, so uh, since I'm talking about the server now, um, you know, like what is a server? Okay. Or else, like I'll show you certain images here. Like, um, you know, um, if I ask you if this is server, you would definitely say yes. Uh, this one, some might say that, yeah, it might be a server, it might not. Uh, for this, you might say that, yeah, this is a server. This, again, you would say that it's a server. So, um, please understand don't go uh, server with, the, with its build. Okay. Generally, people have this um, misconception that server means it's a big thing, and you know it, it will have lights, and you know it's a big thing, and lot of cables will be connected, and so on. No, uh, please understand. Server simply means which provides a particular service. Okay. Server is a hardware or software-based uh, application, you can say, which provides a particular service like for example 
your router at your home if you have an internet you have you will have a router right router is a server that small device is basically a server if you have a dongle that is also a server because it is providing certain service for you okay and what is the service internet is the service that it is providing for you okay so it's called as a server so never go server with a uh, with the image uh, that it's, it will be big and you know lot of cables and uh, weight and such things no nothing like that server can be as small as your mobile phone it could be um, you know it could be a hardware based okay like this or it could be a software based also so we have software based server like um, you know windows and linux both of them have it uh, one of the example of software based server is active directory okay active directory is a is a is a uh, software based server provided by microsoft company okay um, what it does is uh, with with this active directory you can create users okay and you can manage users right like if you are if you, if in your college uh, uh, if you are given with a unique username and password that was done using act that is done using active directory if you are if you have worked anywhere if you have work experience you know where they have given you a system obviously they would give you a username and a password you know they'll have an account for you so this account this username and password are created by using active directory so there are a lot more uh, such uh, servers that are there uh, so the task here that would be given is to list out and to research about various servers it could be you know software based or hardware based you have to research on different different servers like for example uh, some of the example i'll give you is dhcp dynamic host control you know protocol based server uh, you have dns domain name server okay so there are lot lot of them uh, uh, you know please please make sure that you uh, research if you have decided to join the internship you can start working on the on these tasks okay so that when you join you can submit it okay prepare it and keep so uh, uh, you 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 can do uh, work on the task and you know just uh, put it copy paste it on a word document there is no particular format or template or anything you can use your own okay we are not giving any format because uh, every company will have their own format and if we give you a format you will think that this is the only format and when you join some other company you might not be able to adapt that particular format so that's the reason we are not keeping any format and please understand every company has their own format you have to be adaptive with different different formats that would come okay so that's about the task going forward with the linux uh, so what is linux linux is an open source based operating system okay so don't say don't just say operating system it's an open source operating system first released on september 17 1991 by linus torvalds torvalds okay uh, it is written in c language all right uh, it's a unix like operating system uh, which means that the linux was derived from unix so unix is a operating system again which was developed by at&t bell labs and it was not open source so unix was not open source it was paid it was commercial um, uh, the story of linux is that uh, when linus torvalds Torvald, what did it was, was he paid uh, at and bells and he bought the unix operating system he was a coder he he uh, what did it was he came up with his certain changes and upgradation to the unix environment and he reached out to at and and bells and he said that you know there are certain changes required so please make these changes but the at and bell labs refused to accept the changes and upgrade upgradation it was not changes i would say upgradation that linus wanted to have uh, but they refused to have it and that's why this guy what it was he made his own operating system with the changes that he was trying to suggest okay so he bought it from atnd labs and then he made it, made his own from this so it's derived from unix you can say okay however it is not uh, completely uh, unix based it is changed and then uh, uh, linus ma made his own operating system and that's the you know that's why he has uh, kept it open source and uh, you know he has give, given it for free so that anyone whoever wants 
can come and make change just like he was um, uh, ignored and he was rejected uh, his appeal was rejected by AT&T Bell Labs he didn't want that to happen that's the reason he came up with open source based concepts okay so uh, if you talk about Linux and Windows I'm sure you might be a Windows user if you're not a Windows user then it's very good uh, however if you're um, uh, you know um, a Windows user I would suggest you to stop using Windows or use less of Windows and try to get more hands-on with Linux because the more you use the more you will get practice okay so I'll tell you my incident um, when I was young in my college uh, in, in my school time I was finding it uh, a college basically um, I was finding it difficult uh, to um, you know uh, tell the time about the 24 hour, hour format okay so what I did was I in my, in my mobile phone I changed the timing to 24 hours basis 24 hours format okay so earlier I had to count like if it is 15 then I had to count 12 1 2 3 okay it's 3 o'clock but when I started the 24 hour format in my phone uh, you know I, I i got used to it and now i can tell if it is uh, you know um, 17 or if it is 18 uh, you know it is uh, 6 o'clock and then like that i can tell it now so you have to start using linus if not now once we start with the onboarding of yours uh, we will guide you with the installation and everything so don't worry if you're not able to install or anything uh, but you try is, is what I would say okay why we are telling is uh, one thing is obviously it is very useful for you as a security expert as a, a VAPT guy you have to be well expertised with Linux okay um, uh, and uh, you know talking about the differences with Linux and Windows uh, there are a lot of advantages with Linux okay uh, you might be a Windows uh, lover here but you have to shift to Linux so um, where is Linux used um, uh, is Linux useful are we dependent on Linux and can we survive without Linux okay so these are some of the questions which I ask my candidates and people and especially with the third one are we dependent on Linux people say no we are not dependent and can we survive without Linux people will say yes we, we can survive if I ask you also you might say yeah we can survive what is big deal you are saying this or the candidates say this because they are not aware of the facts or the uses of Linux so let's see a, a, a few facts about Linux here okay um, the first thing is uh, you know it was Linus Torvalds who wrote the uh, Linux kernel initially but he hardly quotes anything today as I said uh, you know it's a community however he is actively responsible for managing and merging codes which are written by other developers so there are developers who write codes and then they uh, he merges it that's it he's not writing any code uh, now he just made it then he made it open source anyone wanted to join the community you know they could join and many people had joined Today we have over 80% of the Linux distributions which come from developers which are paid by big enterprises. Okay, developers are paid by big enterprises. Linux is not paying them. Okay, and Intel is the top company uh, who is a com contributor to the Linux family. Microsoft is also one among them. Google, lot of them are there who are contributing to Linux. Okay, um, Steve Jobs offered Linux a job in uh, 2000 on the condition that he stopped that is Linus stopped development on Linux however he, he declined he didn't accept the offer uh, Linux is used by every major program in the world including NASA and the ESE private space companies like SpaceX uh, we have uh, you know our, uh, Elon Musk okay uh, they, they also use uh, Linux all right uh, with the later having completed 65 space missions and all these space missions have Linux system okay in the powerful Falcon 9 rockets all right so uh, Linux is used in the space Linux totally dominates supercomputers okay world's finite super fast fastest computers had Linux so supercomputers if you have 
if one wants to have then they need to have linux because windows does not support the option is linux not just that uh, if you look at the uh, things here uh, some of some some if you look at some of the facts you will get a better understanding and you will be able to uh, you know uh, tell that whether we are, we are dependent on linux whether we are uh, we cannot survive without linux or not so the answer is we are dip highly dependent on linux and we cannot survive without linux the proof is here because nasa completely runs on linux nasa that system we have completely runs on linux e readers like amazon kindle on linux every tv in today's scenario runs on linux smart watch that you have uses linux cars use linux gaming uh, uses linux okay all the gaming servers and devices it could be uh, you know stream ox it could be anything uh, sony xp every everything uses linux social media runs on linux like could be facebook instagram youtube twitter all of them run on linux okay uh, business and governments run on linux like the new york stock exchange um, you might be knowing about it uh, they use linux and pentagon also uses uh, linux federal aviation administration uses linux uh, retail uh, runs on uh, linux apple runs on linux routers la runs on linux and you know uh, these are some of the facts here so space pro from space program from ships cargoes train bullet train uh, metro everywhere you know you just name it and it's linux that is used so linux is very important all right and now let's understand the core part of linux okay so we have something called as kernel a kernel um, it is basically a central part of an operating system okay so operating system is a is a central part of a computer and kernel is central part of an operating system it manages the operations of the computer and the hardware okay so kernel is the main part kernel is soul of operating system and operating system is soul of a computer that's how it is okay so it sits here you have users like you and me applications like ppt excel word or something then there is operating system under operating system we have kernel and this kernel is responsible of connecting with the hardware managing cpus memory devices uh, etc okay so that's about uh, uh, kernel uh, next is linux shell okay uh, linux shell is basically a command interpreter the the shell is a command interpreter it is a program that executes other programs okay in uh, linux it, it it is basically a shell okay it's a shell uh, which is a command interpreter which means that it takes the command and executes other other programs okay it provides a computer user an interface it provides computer user an interface to the linux system so that the user can run different commands or utilities or tools with some input data so as you know earlier linux um, was completely command based now you know like if you see kali kali is not a command base it, it has a gui okay graphical user interface but earlier um, it was completely command based so you had to write command for everything even now also you have to write commands for most of the things um, so the it was the shell which was uh, with which you were interacting with you had to interact you have to interact you inter you interact with the shell and uh, you know like for example if you say a delete okay so you run the command in linux and the linux will uh, run it back the kernel will take it the kernel will go to that particular file system using the uh, other features of the operating system so apart from kernel there are other features also of the operating systems that are there so then it goes there and it deletes and it comes back like you know so that's about the um, linux uh, shell which which looks like a black screen nothing else okay a black screen you will have 
and that's the reason every uh, hacker screen in the movies and all you might have seen that it will be a black screen and green font kind of thing okay so it's an illusion that they create however in in real time it's a shell all right uh, and linux has lot of distributions talking about the distributions there are many distributions of linux distributions means ver versions like you have ubuntu we have kali there are a lot of such distributions so the task for you to he here is to list down the various linux distributions that are there okay so google for it various linux distributions try to understand wh what each of the di distributions do what is the purpose of it and so on and make a list of it in a word document okay so make a research and a report of it uh, the next thing is terminal okay uh, what, what is a terminal very important a terminal is an interface in which you can type and execute text based commands it's a interface okay it's an interface where you enter the uh, where you type or where you enter and execute the text based commands okay it allows access to many more commands and scripts and a common terminal uh, common terminal task of installing an application can be achieved with a single command so we're talking about shell right so shell is basically a terminal okay where you're entering the command so if you want to install an application generally in windows you have to go to the website download uh, select the download button then you open double click you open you click on install and lot of steps you follow all these steps in linux within one particular command that is install so and so uh, path you give and then the tool gets installed so this is the power of linux which is using terminal uh, which is running on a shell okay so uh, talking about the linux some commands we will we will uh, uh, you know during the training we will teach you about the basic linux commands that are required for you to know uh, so for now the task is to research and study various linux commands and prepare a, a report of um, uh, various commands in detail and uh, you can take time for this so uh, the task that we, we will be giving you uh, will not be just um, uh, you know like um, timeline specific you can you know the, the task will be very different different things you will give be a given time there will be no deadlines in in some of the tasks like that so there will be different different things so for this you don't have a timeline you can take your time and you can come up the reason is because there are so many of them and it takes time for you okay so we are not given a deadline for this uh, however as i said we will take sessions for you where we will teach you about the linux commands but if you do it uh, do the task it's benef it's very, very very much benefit for you so that it will help you to learn and understand faster okay so that's about uh, linux commands okay so uh, uh, we have uh, covered about ethical hacking and uh, some part of linux and uh, kali linux also so uh, you will have separate sessions where we will teach you each of the stages of ethical hacking we using different different tools how to do it and so on and uh, even about kali linux also and uh, kali also and linux also we will have separate sessions for you so please make sure you know uh, you install the uh, kali operating system in your virtual machine or uh, virtual box anyone you can use uh, don't dual boot your system uh, we will not recommend that to you use a virtual machine okay so uh, virtual machine is an application where you can run different different applica applications there all right so uh, uh, please make sure you do it if you need any help you can uh, connect with uh, mr iqbal um, you know he will put you in touch with your uh, mentor or anyone from the team or me or someone and we will help you out in case if you have any uh, any of such queries or anything then we will uh, help you out okay uh, but make sure you do it before before we start with your internship and all uh, you do it and if you see the sessions that we have taken is completely theoretical ones because it's very important that we take theoretical sessions so that you know uh, even though it's a practical oriented subject but theoretical concepts are very important so this will help you okay by the time you watch all the videos okay by the time you um, like uh, start with your internship you will be clear with the basics that is required for us and 
uh, once you once your internship starts we will directly start working on the vulnerabilities you will not waste your time anything because you are already watching the videos if you're not joining our internship absolutely fine no problem uh, you know you can take this as a credit from our end um, you know uh, uh, it will be you know helpful for you definitely um, so uh, you know once your internship starts we will start directly with the technical thing uh, with the vulnerability you can start working on the uh, targets and you know you can earn rewards and also um, uh, one of the intention to give this session link is that you understand the um, you know quality of a training um, you know uh, you understand the concepts that are there all right how, how things work and all uh, and um, and also that you know we can start with directly with the uh, you know uh, technical hands-on training part once we start with the uh, internship of yours so that's the uh, reason why we are giving this session for you uh, uh, so i hope you have liked so far whatever contents we have given uh, and uh, at this point if if at all you have not confirmed your internship and if you want to confirm if you are satisfied so far please confirm back to mr iqbal uh, and uh, you know he will um, take it forward because it takes time for us to uh, do the onboarding uh, process there is background verification and all those stuff are there so it will take time uh, please don't wait for the last video to to be watched and uh, then you um, you know uh, come up because it will take some time that's the reason i'm saying so if you have already decided if you are already satisfied please uh, confirm so that the onboarding process is started for you in the meantime and you continue watching and you continue watching the videos as well okay so that's it for now and uh, I, i'll see you in the next video bye